Hello everyone, I'm Taisha Brown. Welcome to my channel. I have some breaking news that you do not want to miss. Stay tuned to the end of the video. So during this video, I will be teaching you the art of ranking fast on Etsy using proven SEO tips and tricks. Mm -hmm. Now you may be asking yourself, why is SEO important? Why do I need to know this information, Taisha? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because people shop on Etsy and they do so because they know that they're going to find something unique and special. I mean, after all, that's why you're selling on Etsy, right? Well, they go on there and they type in a few words in the search bar and then they're matched with the unique products that are available on Etsy. Now, the keywords you add to your listing are essential tools for matching your listings to those searches. Etsy search is designed to help shoppers find what they're looking for and to inspire them to click that add to cart button. Here are the basics, folks. The keywords you use in your tags, your titles, your listing descriptions, your categories, and attributes, they all work together to match your listings with shoppers search. When there is a match to a search query, your items have the potential to appear in the search results, right? In Etsy search gathers all the listings that have that particular keyword that matches that shopper's query. So then we rank those listings or Etsy ranks those listings so that shoppers see the items that uh, are most relevant to their query. Their query. And uh, using strong keywords in your listings will create an opportunity for your particular items in your Etsy shop to be shown in those search results. And that's what you want, folks. That's what you want. So now I'm going to give you a few tips on making the most of keywords in your Etsy shop. That's why you're here, right? <laughs> you click for a reason. Now we're going to talk about categories. Categories act like tags, uh, but they're not quite tags, okay? Be sure to add the most specific option available for the item that you're listing in your shop. And adding more specific categories will give you more opportunities to match with that search, okay? Remember that. Remember that. And when you add specific subcategories to your listings, your items are included in all the categories that subcategory is nested within. So it like builds off of each other. Important to, to note that. And since the categories act like tags, you don't need to add tags that repeat the phrases that appear in your categories and attributes. I've seen that a lot. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Help me out. <laughs> now, uh, just for an example, if you have a listing uh, and it's for like uh, in the nail stencils category, your listing could appear in results for nail stencil searches. And adding nail stencils also means your listing appears in the categories above it, uh, including things like the craft supplies and makeup and cosmetics. How about that? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about attributes. We all know what attributes are, but what do you mean when it comes to Etsy? Hmm, let's talk about it. Attributes are those extra details that you can add about your listing after choosing a category. Some are more general, such as the color 
and the material, while others are specific to the category you choose, such as maybe it's a pattern for uh, clothing or room uh, for home decor. And since each attribute you add acts like a tag and helps you match your shopper's search, when they are mat they're using those matching terms, it's important to add all, all y'all, all of the relevance options, even if they're less precise. Y'all heard that? Okay, okay, rewind if you need to. That's good, that's good. While you might use the word uh, magenta to describe the yarn that you're listing, if pink is also accurate, you should add it as a color attribute, y'all. You might describe the pattern on your t-shirt as nature-inspired, but don't miss out on, on an opportunity to add that to that plants and trees pattern attribute. Once you've added uh, all the attributes that could describe your item, you can use the list and description, the title, the tags to describe it in your own terms. You know, break it down, put it in your own words, okay? Okay. You don't need to add tags that are exact matches for your attributes you've already added. For example, if you add the faux fur, what my sister girl right here got on, she got on that faux fur, right? Yeah, looking good too. Looking good. Looking good. You don't need to add faux fur as a standalone tag, okay? <laughs> you can still add it to a multi-word descriptive tag such as faux fur coat, something like that. Makes sense? Okay, okay, I know you're following me over here. Now let's talk a little bit about titles. Keywords in your title can help you match with a, a shopper's curie. Curie, curie, y'all, I can't say that word today. It's late as Sunday, but they're just one of the factors that Etsy search looks at. So it's a multitude of things. It's all like a multi-dimensional type of thing. Etsy search looks at all the information that you add, including your categories and attributes to find keywords that matches a shopper's search. How about that? Now, it's important to focus on writing short, clear descriptive titles that make it easy for your shoppers who are scanning a, a busy search results page to see what you're selling and we know our shoppers are typically on the move everybody got a smartphone in their hand these days so you got to be mindful of that lead with the keywords that best describe what your item is um, okay Make sure, because we want all our customers, or you want your customers to see that first when they're browsing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if they got a, a, a mobile device, it's tiny, so you want it to like, okay, people don't got time to be trying to search for all this stuff. They coming for something in particular, so you need to make it as easy as possible for them. And uh, one other thing where a phrase is using your title doesn't affect a listing ranking, you can use punctuation and some symbols in your titles to separate phrases and Etsy search will still be able to read each of those phrases to see if they match with the shopper's search. So you can put some punctuation in there. I typically do it. Yeah, I do that. When writing your titles, be sure to include your most descriptive keywords. But keep a buyer in mind, not a computer. We're dealing with human beings here with emotions. So I always try to put something in there that describes it, uh, maybe a trigger emotion in my write-up. So I'm always thinking about the person, not a computer, because we're dealing with humans here and all that comes with that. <laughs> Adding long list of keywords to your titles it may actually confuse buyers or turn them off your listing. For example, this kind of title might be difficult for a buyer to understand at a glance. And I'm putting here quotation marks like personalized knit men's leather kit, something like that. 
uh, groomsman gift uh, and monogram. They're gonna be like, what is all of that? Uh, the title is still helpful because it in contains some important keywords and covers the basic uh, information. But is your uh, buyer going to be able to understand that? Maybe not. So maybe you can reword it like a monogram, leather kit, a groomsman gift, you know, something. You got to reword that stuff and make it make sense, okay? You have to make it make sense for the people. Now we're gonna talk about some listing descriptions. Etsy search considers keywords and phrases within your listing descriptions when ranking your listings. The keywords you use across your listing titles, descriptions, tags, categories, and attributes are essential when it comes up in that search, okay? The first phrase of search ranking within Etsy search algorithm. Everything got an algorithm, yep, including Etsy. Got an algorithm, y'all. Here's a few tips when writing your listing descriptions. Aim to incorporate relevant keywords in the first few sentences of your listing descriptions. Avoid copying your title verbatim or simply listing your top keywords. Okay? Instead, you want to craft a sentence or two that casually incorporates a few of your top keywords in a way that sounds human and written in your brand's voice. Continue to include information that's important that will help the buyers uh, understand your product. Okay, And that's where I tell, tell you a little bit earlier that I get uh, use emotion there. And what about some tag do's? Some do's when it comes to tags. Do use all them 13 tags. They give them 13 for a reason, folks. Each tag you add is an opportunity to be matched in the search, in the SC search, okay? Do use multi-word phrases. Your tags can be up to 20 characters long. It's better to use multi-phrases than to load your tag with single words. For example, like custom bracelet is stronger than custom and then bracelet. Uh, do consult your shop stats. Refresh the tags on listings that are getting less traffic. So you got to get in there and look at your numbers. Numbers are important in business in general, right? Yes, it is as well in Etsy. I uh, do consider synonyms and regional phrases if shoppers use regional uh, spellings like jewelry or something like that. Uh, however, don't, uh, they don't always account for some regional phrases in Etsy. And do target long tail keywords. Instead of trying to compete for popular generic searches like tote bag or diamond ring, prioritize less popular phrases that describe what's really special about the product like canvas tote bag or natural diamond ring, okay? Sounds good. Now we're gonna talk about a little don'ts. Don't repeat the tags. Now, the 13 tags you add should all be un as unique as possible. Yeah, unique. Don't repeat the categories and attributes. No, if anybody told you that, don't do it. The categories and attributes you add act like tags. I mentioned that a few times, right? So an exact phrase appears in your categories. You don't need to add it to the tag, folks. Don't include misspelling. Check your spelling. Etsy search. Redirect shoppers to the correct results if they make a common mistake. So you shouldn't misspell keywords on purpose to reach shoppers who may have a tiny little typo. Don't add tags in multiple languages. Use the language that you speak, you know, and whatnot, okay? Because Etsy's going to translate that when they... Uh, look into the, the search, okay? They're really smart. They got that algorithm I was talking about. Don't worry about the plurals now. The same folk putting diaries, diary, diary, whatever. No, no, don't do it. Brainstorming ideas for your, for your tags, right? So it's important to use all 13 tags. I mean, they give 13 tags for a reason. Use them, y'all, use them. And um, the tags, they really allow you to add a little bit of variety, okay? So avoid repeating uh, phrases, okay? Think about what makes your product unique and how shoppers may be searching for those items. 
always think about that during your brainstorming time. You might have to get creative to come up with some phrases, okay? There are 20 characters when it comes to those uh, phrases that you could use. So you have 20 characters for that or less. You can always do less, but no more than 20. If the keyword phrase you want to target is longer than 20 characters, then you can add multiple um, phrase tags. And those can contain those terms that you're trying to match with. That's still possible to do that. For example, let's say your target uh, customer is looking for minimalist diamond engagement rings. Now, y'all know that's more than 20 characters, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very descriptive and, and, and it's a great way to target, but you're gonna have to break that phrase down, right? And you can uh, chunk it down so that your shopper may still use it in the search. Something like minimalist jewelry or diamond ring or engagement ring will still be able to put your listing on there. Now, these phrases are more descriptive than breaking up the, key, the, C, the keywords into those single words like minimalist or ring but still contain all the terms that might appear in your target audience's search, okay? So think about that when you're doing your brainstorming sessions. You shouldn't really just go into creating a listing and just, you know, not think of, about what you're actually doing or creating because this is your business, this is your brand. You want to reach your target, target audience, right? Or all of it is in vain. So think about this and I encourage you to please do some brainstorming before you list your items. These are very important for you to meet your business goals. Descriptive tags that clearly and accurately describe what your product is or they're really a great place to start, but there are lots of different kinds of tags that you can try, okay? Descriptive, uh, here are some examples of descriptives. Maybe you have a 1920s cat brooch or a reusable straw pouch. Uh, these are just some examples, but these type of categories uh, that you add to your listing should describe what your product is but adding a few descriptive tags lets you describe your product in your own words, right? In your own words, because you're unique, your product is unique, so you can use your words to describe your product that you created. And again, you can use those multi-word phrases. Try, not, try to stay away from the individuals, okay? And again, you have some examples right here on the screen. Materials and techniques. Now, you're the expert when it comes to your products. You're the subject matter expert, SME, right? You are. Now add some tags that highlight how your unique product is made. It's really good. Etsy has those videos now that you can use. It's available to some creators. And you could do behind the scenes type things for that. People want to, to know that, right? So, use it. <laughs> or talk about what's unique about your item. If you sell personalized or custom items, be sure to add some tag phrases that contain those words. Get specific and describe the techniques or the methods that you use. For example, hampered cuff, custom embroidery, reclaimed wood, frame, that's three words. <laughs> Personalized tumbler. You, you get my drill, right? You get my drill. And it's for, it's used to give those uh, shoppers who are shopping for a gift but need some inspiration, some ideas with tags that describe who a product might be for. So you can target that as well. Who is this thing for? Who was the ideal person for this? You can talk about that. Think of your ideal customer and who the ideal gift recipient 
Maybe. You'll see. And you can look on Etsy. I just encourage you to go look on Etsy and look at some of the lists. You'll see stuff like, in the title, gifts for boyfriend, gifts for wife, gift for her, uh, newlyweds, new mom, teacher gift. You'll see it in there. Then we're talking about there are some occasions. There are several shopping occasions that occur through a calendar year. So think about those, you know. Pop, people popping that bubbly for an anniversary. Anniversaries are every day. Somebody got married. Somebody celebrating something every day. So think about that, whether it's their anniversary, the little baby get christening, uh, stocking stuffers when it comes to Christmas time, bachelorette, folk getting married. You know, it's, it's really all of that stuff you have to look at. Just put yourself in the, uh, in the shopper's shoes. Who's looking for the perfect gift to celebrate one of those life milestones? Milestones happen each and every day. So what would you want? Always come from that mind frame because you're a shopper as well. You shop, right? I know I do. <laughs> That's my husband. I shop. So what would you like to see? And what would you type in a search to look for? Think about that. You have to get into the mindset of your customer. And imagine even, I like to do some hosting. Now this was pre the whole thing that just went down, but I'm getting, I'm gonna be getting back into it. So I like to host. What would I need as a hostess for party? Hmm. I like to put on a good shindy, y'all. <laughs> All right, all right. And just a quick reminder that occasion attributes should be used to describe listings that are made for that occasion. So the customer attribute is great for Christmas stockings or ornaments. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Solution oriented. At the end of the day, what your business should be about is solving your customer's problem. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Your business, your products, or your services in your business, I should reword that, should, call, should solve your customer's problem. So always think about it as well as solution-oriented. Now, some examples of this. This is just a few examples now. It's not the end of the, you know, be-all closet organization. Look at the seller here. He could use a little bit of organization in his closet, right? So does your product, could your product solve his problem? And for this particular gentleman? Perhaps. Uh, ladies, you know, our hair gets all in the way when we're working out. Maybe you need to, maybe you're selling some workout headbands or little lunchbox decals to make it custom and unique. Indoor garden. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah. What's going to make your customer's life a little bit easier? Your product should solve that problem. Maybe they got a messy place or maybe they need some art to put on the wall. They just, you know, you got a new homeowner or a little college student. You got a little first place. They need to put a little artwork up. Maybe that's your product. And you serve it and you serve it well. A little bit of style. A shopper's personal aesthetic informs their purchase decisions. We all want to feel like the things we showcase uh, to our world, right? So use some tags that describe the unique style of your product so shoppers who know what they're looking for, they know what they want and find it. Think about the time period or a palette or aesthetic that matches your product and combine that with a word that describes what your product is. And again, you can use those multi-word phrases, right? Art Deco lamp. Oh, come on, come on with it. Minimalist rug. Rustic wall decor. You got me. I know it. And think about the size. For some products, Scale can be key. Try adding tags that describe the size and the shape of your products to reach shoppers looking for the right fit. Shallow basket, for example. Large beach tote. Toddler pants. 
tiny gold hoops. Yeah, yeah. And here are just some tools to update your tags and titles, okay? If you're ready to give some of those techniques that we've talked about here a try, which I hope you are, uh, here are a few ways that you can make quick changes to your listings. You can add or remove a tag from multiple listings at once by checking the box on those listings in your shop manager. If you don't know what your shop manager is, we got some real problems. But, you know, <laughs> go to the shop manager. You know where it's at. I'm going to show you that. Clicking editing option and selecting edit tags from the drop down list. You can also edit your titles and tags by using the edit, the quick edit tool, which uh, lets you make updates without clicking into each of the listing. So just bear that in mind, okay? All right, you got it, right? I know, you're real smart. And I just want you to please note that Etsy search is always changing and every shop is different. But if you take some of this information and you implement it, you should see some changes. This information in this video is the current uh, best practice that Etsy recommends. I didn't make this stuff up. This came from the horse's mouth. Etsy recommends this. So I just want to let you know if anything changes when it comes to SEO, I will do an update to this video, okay? I'll make a new video because I want to keep you as informed as possible. And I appreciate you taking the time out to watch this video, to learn, to make changes in your business. That's going to be positive for you. And I want you to have a wonderful week. If you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up because I want to continue to make more content and reach other folks. And I can't reach the audience that I want to reach unless I have some more subscribers. I want to keep giving out this free knowledge. So just do me a favor, it's free y'all. You know, that's nothing. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. Thank you, I appreciate it. Now y'all have a good week. Toodles.